So, uh, Cameron Harris, we have known each other. I was just checking how long we've actually known each other on LinkedIn. And would you believe it's only since January 2023? <laughs> is that is that the time frame? Yeah, that's okay. that's officially when we connected on LinkedIn. So, Cameron, tell me about what you do and how you got into the world that you're in right now. Yeah, so obviously my name is Cameron Harris. I'm the manager director of Truth Fitness, as you can see by the uh, shameless plug-in, the branding behind my head. And um, we transform and save the lives of business leaders globally. So what, what that what that kind of means in a nutshell is most of our clients are business people that have really pushed their body to the limit. They've been traveling for years. There's been the stress of building a business, probably not been sleeping well. They've not been eating the right types of food. And the level of stress that they've put their body through kind of when they're growing a the business, they're dealing with all the kind of teams and the problems that come with growing a business. They've put their health at the bottom of the, the priority list. And what we do as a company is we come in and we uh, we kind of take them through our rapid results system, which is anywhere from six to 16 weeks. And we help them to get a handle on everything from habit optimization is where we start, which is around, you know, making sure people are making better habits around movement and food. Then we go into the training side of things, making sure they're doing training that not only is effective, but also works around a crazy schedule. So whether they're in London or Dubai or New York, making sure that it's flexible and it follows them around the globe as well. Then we make sure their nutrition is in, on point. A lot of our guys struggle with the fact they're out with clients quite a lot as well. So making sure they understand best practices that work not only at home, but wherever they are around the planet. And then we go into sleep, which is a huge one, which I'm sure you know all about that because it's very trendy at the moment people talking about the benefits of uh, sleep around performance and longevity as well and the final part is kind of our steps around neat which is more movement throughout the day and um yeah I've, I've done this for i know i look 27 but i'm actually 37 i've been doing this for 19 years now so all the way from gym instructor kind of back in the day when i was 17 and um i've always played sport always been a huge part of my life and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all I've known, really. So I've gone from personal trainer, working with, you know, anyone with a wallet and a pulse, to be totally frank, moving more into a specialist within the strength and conditioning space, working with athletes and uh, moving into what we do now, which is business leaders. And we really focus mm. on that demographic because we've done it a lot of times now, over 450 times if we've, we've taken people through this process. And uh, yeah, we've got a, got a system now, a process that really works for that busy kind of business leader that I spoke about a little bit earlier. You said she said that you're only uh, only only thirty seven. I'm twenty two. I've just run a business. <laughs> mm, no comment. You, you are kind of you are kind of right though. It does take its toll on you running a business because your business, uh, like when you start out, it saps all your energy because it's literally you're throwing everything at it, and then as you start to grow it kind of puts more pressure on you, particularly if you're traveling. And like you say, seeing clients a lot, they always going to have, you're always going to take clients out for dinner. There's always going to be a few wild nights in there. And it's, you know, it's easy to say, just go to the gym every day. But if, if 50% of your week is traveling, that's quite tricky. Absolutely. Um, so how, how do you, how do you bet, get a routine for somebody like that where they're moving around a lot? They're seeing that they're, they're not, they can't, you know, cook it, batch cook everything on a Sunday and take it all into it. How do you, how do you create a program that Kate creates a rhythm for people like that? So it's a great question. And it is kind of, it's the million dollar question, which is how do you do that? For somebody that doesn't have any time, they're never at home, they're always traveling, they've got huge amounts of stress, running teams, etc. And essentially what we've done is we've boiled it down to a couple of tactics and techniques that really work. So first of all is that you need to get really clear with that individual, that business person. What is, what is it you actually want to achieve? Because what we often find is that business people are highly successful, they're highly driven, they're often obsessed with being successful, which I'm sure you, you you understand, I understand as a business owner. So 
they've kind of put so much time, energy and, and money and hours and everything into building this business that they think they can just do the same thing with their health. Mm-hmm. Which, If I can smash this, if I can be this successful in this space, why can't I do it in this space? So we need to get really clear on what exactly is it that you want to achieve? Because I, I do it in my presentation, actually, I talk about it. People want to be a successful business owner and they want to jump like Michael Jordan. And it's quite difficult because you've still got this big responsibility over here. Unless you're someone that's completely you know, retired and you've kind of, mm. you've got lots of time. It's very difficult. So getting really clear about what it is you want to achieve. Is it you actually want to be a bit healthier so you can play with your kids for longer, you know, in, in respect to living a bit longer? Is it that you want to just have a bit better sleep so that you can focus and be better in the office, have better performance? Is it that, you know, you just want to lose some weight because you want to feel better about yourself? Once you kind of understand that, then you can start to build the program out from there. That's where you mentioned the gym and the batch cooking and the calorie counting. That's where that advice falls short because it doesn't Mm -hmm. take into consideration that, you know, someone like yourself, for example, you're really busy. That's not going to work. So in answer to your question, you need to make sure the program, when it comes to the training side of things, is built for everywhere you're going to be. Let's just say, for example, okay, I'm at home these two days a week. I can do a session at 7 a.m. on the Monday, 7 a.m. on the Wednesday. There you're kind of, they're in the diary, right? And then you need to make sure that you've got a hotel session that you can do when you're in a hotel in New York. You need to make sure that you have something in place when you're you're supposed to do a session and you couldn't get it in. So what's the what's the kind of best practices when that happens? So there's no kind of, you can't structure it in a way where it says you need to do this at these times. It's more, let's understand some fundamentals so that, you know, this will work here. This works if this happens. And the great thing, because us as a company, we're online, we can actually do the sessions with people wherever they are anyway, in any time zone. When it comes to food, again, it's about understanding the best practices around food. We don't do calorie counting. We don't do kind of batch cooking because of the things you just mentioned it's just impossible Mm. so again what we do is we educate our clients on the best approach to nutrition so you know we always focus on high protein we always focus on good healthy fats we focus on minimizing carbohydrate as much as we can and getting that from green vegetables because you know most people we speak to they're overeating on carbs and sugar and that's causing a lot of the problem they're overeating on those kind of sources so why don't you understand the, the kind of best practices around nutrition it doesn't matter if you're at home if you're on holiday with your family just kind of understand how to eat and um, yeah once you've got the training and nutrition pieces in place and then you've optimized your habits so you know you're making sure you're getting your steps in you're making sure you're getting your hydration in once those kind of three or four pillars are in place you will start to turn things around. But again, you, you're completely right that, you know, batch cooking and telling clients not to drink and all this stuff, it, it's not its not realistic for people that are busy and successful. It, it isn't. So I've got a bone to pick with the fitness industry. A, a big bone. Did you get the pun there? A big bone to pick <laughs> with, the, with the fitness industry. So on LinkedIn... The fitness industry, it, it's its nearly as bad on Facebook, but it's horrific, right? So Cameron, I'm not asking you to throw your colleagues under the bus, but here's what I see. I see people putting up pictures of people with six packs. And I, I understand that that, you know, social proof and testimonials are important. But the worst thing I get, and I get them all the time, I don't know whether I've told you about my secret the fitness coaches coaches secret LinkedIn strategy. I think they scroll through LinkedIn looking for people's profile pictures with double chins. And then they just li- bit literally hit them up. <laughs> right. That's all I see. Right. And I, I think your health is kind of deeply personal. And I think when people hit people up, they kind of forget that, hang on a minute, you're stepping into somebody's world that they're probably a little touchy about. Why do you think that that happens that, you know, I'm not saying you do it. I know you don't do that. But why do you think people do that, particularly in your industry? Deep question. One I could probably talk about for the next 12 hours, but I'm not going to. And again, you know, 
I've, I've commented on this quite a bit and you maybe see me do it because you, you keep up with what I post anyway, but you know, there, there's a very toxic environment that's being built within the fitness industry. And I've seen it get a lot worse over the last couple of years. And, you know, you, you mentioned don't call people out that that's a big part of the problem is that there's, they've kind of, the industry's moved into a place where it's all about calling up, calling each other out and saying this person's chatting rubbish and this person's not telling the truth and that's crap. And it, that for me is the, the biggest problem straight off the mm. bat. The second, the second problem that you've got is that it, if you try and you know monetize this type of business, as you mentioned, one of the big, the big things you should be very aware of is that when you are talking to people about you know those personal goals they have, you sending them a you know a black and white pitch of hey here's my client that's got a six pack, it's not going to resonate. So. Mm relationship building is massive within our space and I, i'm not going to go on about what we do specifically but i think a lot of people have lost that and if i look at i'm not going to name names two or three companies that are doing very well within our space it's all about high volume getting people through the door turn them around it's a numbers really game it's a numbers game and, and, and rather than it being about okay well, let's work with a small amount of people and make sure this person gets the achieves the goal they really want and have a great journey and make sure that they kind of tell their friends about it it's about how many people can we get through this system how many people can we monetize and unfortunately you know because it's it's being done in a way that is very marketing focused and i i get it i'm, I'm a business and i get it the problem we've got is and it's all around you know how can i get people into my program make it seem that it's easy it's won't take much effort i can eat what i want i can you know i have a six pack it's bollocks to be totally frank with you and i yeah. I, I really personally have a big problem with the fitness industry myself even though i'm in it i don't like that side of of, of kind of where it, it's always been a bit like that of course it's snake oil type salesman stuff right but i think it's got a lot worse over the last couple of years i don't like the way it's headed i think i think that this is the problem with with marketing online in general, I think, I think it gets, you know, I, I saw something the other day and it said, uh, it was somebody saying, I can help you go from zero to four and a half million dollars in 90 days. And I'm like, the claims just keep getting more and more ridiculous. <clears throat> and it, it, it's true, isn't it? Like if you, if you tell people and show people it can be easy the problem is when they get the other side of the program and they've paid their money. And I'm not saying it's hard, but I think you can kind of do yourself over in promising people something that seems easy, get their money and then realize they realize, actually, this is way more difficult than I thought. Um, and I'm not saying it's impossible. I see this myself is, you know, in my world that a lot of people, maybe you can have some thoughts on this as well think just posting on LinkedIn and all the work, all the clients come to you. And you've, you've said it there. You have to kind of build relationships if you want any, any kind of success. What do you, what do you think on the whole LinkedIn approach? How do you use LinkedIn differently from everybody else? Again, it's, it's all about, relationships. I mean, I'll be totally honest. I've, you know, you've, I've been following you for a while. I kind of use a lot of your systems and how you do things. Cause it's all based around relationships. It's built based around, you know, real conversations with people i think just on the on the front end you know you have to be honest with people and we call truth for a reason we do we tell people mm -hmm. this when we're on calls with people if you're on a consultation call with us it won't be long before we say you know this is a project right mm -hmm. you know this is going to be a little bit of effort involved with this because the worst thing in the world and this is something that we avoid like the plague is to get people into our program take their money and four weeks in, they're saying, whoa, this was not like I thought it was going to be because reputationally, it's crippling. It's mm -hmm. really, really not, not not good. And also the type of people we deal with, because we are dealing with CEOs, hyper successful people, you know, once you piss that type of person off, they will tell people it's not it's not a good person to annoy. So I think you have to be honest with people. I think you have to be very clear that, you know, this is a project and it probably hurts your in the short term because you know, it's not as easy to attract people but if you keep banging that drum and people essentially go well these guys have been honest they're called truth 
maybe we should have a conversation because I, I want to hear something that, you know, is actually going to get me the results that I want rather than blowing smoke up my bum and telling me it's going to take three days when actually it's going to take me six months to a year. I bet it is, though. It can be a kicker, though, isn't it, when you can see somebody fall for the easy answer. I, you know, I've I've had that. I've had somebody come to me and I said, right, it's going to take you six to nine months to really get this to work properly. Mm. And then they go, yeah, but I've got this. I've got this thirty day program that, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you you want to say it, but it sounds like sour grapes at the same time. You want to kind of go, but that's not going to work. Trust me, that's not. But it sounds like sour grapes. But it must it does kick when people do that and you know that actually this is not gonna get them anywhere. Yeah, the the mad thing is that most of them, in my experience, end up coming back. You know, whether it's six months, a year down the line. So do you know what I have uh, just I mean, I think if we talk about specifically the type of people we work with, because they are so successful, you know, they don't like to be wrong a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So if they do say, actually I'm gonna go with this version over here because you know it's an app and it costs 30 quid and da, 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 whatever. They don't like to be wrong. So when they, they do go through that process and actually hasn't worked for them, for them to reach back out and say, Cam, can we have another conversation? It's quite that that's difficult for them in themselves. I'm sure you see it in your in your space yeah. as well. But yeah, it's, it's it, it, when, when that client does come back and they actually do sign up, they're the ones that get incredible results because they're, 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 they're just like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So, so this must have been a journey for you building this business. What would you say are the, the biggest challenges you faced in building the business that you've built today? COVID definitely, because, um, you know, everyone's going to say that. But I mean, we, we, we had one model, which was where we were going to go into private members clubs. We, we were based in a private members club for three and a half years called the Devonshire Club, which is 50 yards from the Gherkin. So right in the heart of the square mile. So, that's where you grow a business from five to 50 clients, all CEOs, managing directors, all that kind of client. So our original model was to, to do a London and a Manchester and a New York and a Truth Fitness Singapore. And obviously that that stopped. So the, the initial challenge for us when that happened was how do we survive? As I think most of us went through. And the next part was, OK, right, we stand online now. How do we take that client uh, that lead generation piece get people actually into the business but also how would you give people the same experience that they had in a luxury members club where they'd have a glass of water they'd have their towel they'd have a stretch down the end of the session all these little bits that you're trying to replicate online has been a challenge it really has been a challenge and you know it's it's been a, a kind of slow burn even just the rebranding make sure everything looks good looks high quality and also making sure that when you know the first client and the 50th client all have the same great experience, all have the same level of service. And, you know, you, you know yourself in building your business, it's challenging because you have to get great people in. And I'm really lucky. I've got an original team that have been with me since they thought they're amazing. You know, making sure that standards always very, very high. And, um, yeah, I think that's that's been the biggest challenge for us. And then, you know, the, the, the benefit, though, of us being online is that for the clients we deal with, it's so much better and mobile yeah yeah and okay so i've i don't know whether you have any of these any any funny experiences you've had with clients that you can share i'm not expecting names of course because that's you know confidential but um funny experiences with clients um yeah i mean when we used to have our um devonshire club we had a time when the diary got for some reason went into a different time zone and we had three days where clients were turning up in different people's slots so we had you know john was at 7 a.m and steve would turn up at 7 a.m it's a little bit of a nightmare but we kind of got we got through it in the end but i mean um yeah we we have all different types of, of kind of things going on with our clients but i think the, the main one really is people just missing missing sessions because they've been out in new york and they've got the time zone completely wrong and they've been out all night and then they get up at six o'clock to do a session and actually it's 2 p.m here so mainly people missing their, their time slots and kind of getting confused around time zones really shall i tell you one of mine and this is my funniest till till i've not i've not beat this yet 
So somebody comes on board as a client with me and they wanted to build LinkedIn as their inbound. And I said, okay, we can do that. But inbound's a lot like the relationship piece. You can kind of get going really quickly. If, if you just invest time in people, you don't need lots of connections or lots of engagement to do that. But this client particularly said they wanted inbound, right? So I'm like, okay, that's a bit more work, but we can do it. So they pay their money, they sign up. And we're doing the first session and they said, we got what they were selling and all that out. And then, and then they said, but I just need to make it clear. I don't want to connect with anybody. I don't want to post any content. I just want inbound leads. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No messages, no nothing. Just they message me. No content. I'm like, how did they end up? Um, they ended up going getting a job and I gave them the money back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of like, can I have all the results without any effort, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that would be, I think we'd all like that, wouldn't we? A business with no clients, just money arrives. That would be yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's called a lottery, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we've, had, we've had plenty of conversations with people that have kind of, and, and this is why we're at this point now in the business, is that we've had people that are completely delusional around, what's achievable you know what you can actually achieve you know what you're running a business they, they, they say oh okay I've, i can train twice a week for 30 minutes and i can do one consultation call uh, and i've got to eat out four days a week and that's it and it, it, you, you're just being delusional you're not going to get the changes that you want the way you describe it is you're kind of you know some of the people we work with they are the titanic and they're heading towards an iceberg you know mm -hmm. they're 50 heavily overweight, they're not sleeping, they've got diabetes, they're on a plethora of drugs. It's going to take quite a long time to get all that turned around. And mm -hmm. you go and join joining Pure Gym or doing, you know, another brand I don't want to mention in case you get sued, having some shakes every day probably isn't going to do what you think it is. And, and we have a big, you know, an ongoing battle, which is making sure people understand that, this is a project and it will cost mm -hmm. you time and it will cost you money. If you think that Pure Gym or other brand I don't mention is going to fix your problem for £30 a month, it's delusional. It's just not going to work. You need that continued coaching. You need those check-ins. You need that person on the shoulder, the Jiminy Cricket up here all the time, just checking in and making sure that you're doing everything you can to make, make get the result you want, really. So, um, <laughs> I, I have this running joke um, uh, because obviously I travel a lot and I'm eating out all the time. And I say, as I say to people, it costs me a lot of money to get this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've heard that one before. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's time and money, isn't it? It's, it's time and money. It's always time and money. If you, it, you know, you can go and spend, I don't know, a couple of hundred grand and get it all sucked out of here. Or you put the time in and the work in there. And I think I blame credit cards for this, right? I know you're going, what the hell is he talking about, right? If you look at when credit cards came in, before that time, we had to save to buy everything. Yeah. And then credit cards came in and suddenly you could buy things that you wanted now. And then more finance came in. And then we've got social media, which is also showing us the perfect results every time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of showing us, I, I lost 50 pounds in 20 minutes. You know, it's showing us these real kind of uh, exceptional results, assuming they're real, because half of, half of what's on social media is made up. And I think that's created a perception in society that that in our heads we know nothing good comes easy, but actually we believe it's easy. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, it, you know, it's it. I have so many conversations with people that are in this position where they need to fix the health. You know, we talk about people that are in a, a pretty bad way here. They're, you know, they're, they're not they're not going to potentially be on this mortal call for too much longer if they keep doing what they're doing. So, mm -hmm. you know because of the quick fix stuff, because they're seeing photos of people that have done, you know, 12 week program and they've changed everything because they're seeing, you know, quick fixes and different brands of injection that you can take, which help you to lose all this body fat. And 
you know, fat freezing and all this stuff. And I, I could give you so many, so many people that I've spoken to that have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on fat freezing, all this type of stuff, and it hasn't worked for them. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, if you're in a position where you've got the finances to invest in something that, you know, will work for you, you need to get yourself in a headspace, like similar to what you guys do, you know, think of this as a project. It's not going to be a quick fix because even if you can find a quick fix, if it's a crash diet or something that's going to help you to drop fat really quickly, the, the, the kind of the problem with that is that the chances of rebound go through the roof because your body yeah. hasn't actually settled down into a pattern of, of kind of how it should be. Secondly, you haven't learned anything. You haven't learned how to eat. You haven't learned how to train. You haven't learned how to get stronger to improve your sleep. You've just put a, a Band-Aid on a, on a cut, right? Mm-hmm. The, the third big problem you've got is that you will get frustrated by the results that you get either in the short term or the fact that you rebound to where you were. So actually from a motivation standpoint, you're actually going to give yourself less chance of getting to where you want to be because you're going to get disillusioned with the fact that nothing works. So yeah. there's, a, there's a, a huge and you mentioned it, a huge problem that the fitness industry has created by pushing out this kind of quick fix, fix fast stuff because it's given everybody this mindset, which is, okay, I can, I can, I can always lose this weight in the next three weeks. It's, you can't. You can't do it in a proper manner. It just won't happen. So when you're, when you're thinking about this whole quick fix culture, how do you market yourself when you've got all this glitz of, you know, uh, this guy was, you know, 22 stone and 12 weeks later, he's 14 stone. And this is him with his beer gut and this is him with his six pack. That's that's much more exciting and and interesting and all that stuff. And, and, and how do you, because it must be frustrating for you at times when you see that and you go, yeah, but that's not doable. How do you how do you how do you reconcile that in your own marketing? I, th- I think I think again, we go from an honesty standpoint because again because we don't need our model. We haven't got to have five hundred clients. We work mm-hmm. with a select few clients. So what it means when we do bring people into the company, they're people that we really want to work with. They're ready to make the changes, and it makes sure that they get the results that they want. So I think the honesty piece is huge for us. When we put results up and it's, you know, there's no different lighting. It's not had a funny filter put on it. They're not oiled up. You know, it's not on the front page of men's men's fitness magazine. It's a a successful, normal guy, a normal girl that's worked really hard with a framework that's helped them. And normally it's around, okay, I've lost a load of body weight. I've lost a lot of body fat. I'm much stronger. I'm now much healthier. And the biggest mm-hmm. biggest one for us, and we see it all the time, is when they start to reverse the medications that they're on. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, medication's a bit of a, a funny one as well because it's a little bit of a kind of crutch for people, especially mm-hmm. that 50-plus generation, because they, you know, they've been, through a, a, they've been through a time where medication has kind of fixed most problems that existed 50, 60, 100 years ago, right? So medication is a, you know, it's something they can always lean back on and they think to themselves, right, well, you know, if I get diabetes, I can just take diabetes drugs. If I get overweight, I can always take, you know, this medication that's going to help me reverse this problem. If I get gout, I can do this. If I get this, I can do this. So again, it's it's having that kind of safety net of the medication makes it really difficult as well. But, you know, to answer your question, yes, it is quite frustrating because you do see people, you know, going in for quick fixes and you know how it's going to end up. You know, it's going to be a waste of their time. So I would definitely say that the honesty bit is is really how we kind of push that on a marketing side and also making sure that people understand that, look, we've got a six week program that will get you in shape really fast. It will if you're in the right position for it. But it's a launch pad. It's a starting point. It's not going to fix all your ailments, not going to fix all of your problems. As long as you're clear with people that, okay, six weekends is not that long a time. You can really get a lot of change in that time. But understand that's the first bit. The next part is a longer term. Do you think, though, one of the reasons why people struggle with this is because, like, because they don't see the improvement as fast as they want? Like, if if you could, like, you know, when I'm doing stuff, right, I will I will weigh myself and I'll do all this stuff. And 
you can get quite disappointed when you go, hang on a minute, I've been stood still here for three days. <laughs> yeah. Do you know point. what I mean? Yeah, it's a great point. I think, you think again, you know, you've got, there's two ends of the spectrum here. You've got the kind of really quick fix mentality. So, so you, just on the, you know, because you asked about a funny story. What we hear a lot of people, with business leaders come onto calls and they want the quick fix. They also want sustainable weight loss or sustainable health. They're opposite ends of the spectrum. They're not yeah. the same thing. So what we what we often say to people is, look, you know, you're going to have to start getting fast change in the first three to three to four weeks. Really, you need to get that momentum because if you go into something that's the opposite of a crash and it's all about slow, steady results, you know, a pound here, a pound there, a little bit of strength, a little bit of kind of improvement as you go, you get bored. You get mm -hmm. bored like, well, I've not seen any physical change. So what we do with our programs is we get the first part, which is the six-week bit, which is the intensive part. That's where you get the fast changes. You build the momentum, and then that builds you into the longer-term stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, the quick fixes is where, you know, people that are doing brands, I won't mention in case you get sued, but lose all your weight in two weeks. Get it all off as quickly as you can. And it's not, it's not a great approach because you're not building that kind of momentum. You're not building that educational mm -hmm. bit where people understand actually that i need to eat this food i need to do this type of training so yeah it, the fitness industry is a mad old place it's kind of mixed with quick fixes and sustainability and all sorts of different things but in in, in my opinion for doing this for a long time is get someone into an, an initial six-week program get them to see the change quick and then they'll build that trust with you they understand the fundamentals and then you can move on to the kind of more sustainable stuff at the back end of that yeah, because I think I can't remember where I read this, but apparently, apparently, people don't notice a change, and that's what you really. There's two changes you're looking for, isn't it? There's the change you see, which is the last one, and the change that other people see. But apparently, um, I read this that it takes ten pounds for somebody else to see a difference. It depends. That's a lot. Yeah, it depends. I mean, if you've got if you've got if you've got someone that's six foot seven, and they've got 30 kilos to lose you know 10 pounds five four and a half kilos ish is nothing whereas mm. if someone's five foot five and they've yeah. got you know five kilos to lose you will notice a difference so it just depends on the individual tends on depends on the body shape i mean if you're a if you've got a thick set frame and you're tall you'll see that the, the change will be less visible in the in the mm. initial parts but i mean there's a couple of things you can do first off is you should be doing a belly measurement Hundred percent, because you can actually see it on the measurement. You're not like a flexi tailor's tape, like right? this type yeah. of thing. Um, that measurement's great because you can actually see the changes in the numbers. If you don't see it in yourself, mm -hmm. because the thing is with you know weight loss, which essentially is getting fat off your body, right? That can be a little slow, and you won't see it on the scales as quickly as you want it. But a belly measurement's great because every centimeter you lose, you start to feel it in your clothes. So my recommendation, mm -hmm. if if you you know people have been struggling with that is to do a belly measurement because it means that you can actually track something that will change quite fast as well. Okay. And then just when you were talking there about um, kind of um, weighing yourself, obviously it varies, doesn't it? So you can you could have, like, um, when you're talking about those kind of like crash diets, you can lose quite a bit if you just basically it, you end up reducing your water intake and you're not really losing fat or anything. You're just basically yeah. stopping drinking. Yeah. So, so what, what happens is your body retains water. So, so that first kind of two, three, four days, you start to tie your nutrition in nice and tight, start to work out, start to hydrate better. Your body starts getting rid of excess water. So initially the first two, three, four, five days, and we've had clients lose five kilos in the first week. Now, obviously, that's a lot of that's water because they're tall and they're heavy. But what it does is it builds the momentum into the next part. If you do seven days and you haven't even dropped a pound, the yeah, nutrition and training is so far off, it's, it's, not, it's not working. So definitely the water retention is the first part. Once you first through that first kind of six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, then you start moving into more of a fat burning zone. But you can't kind of get to the second part unless you've got to the first part, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then there's this debate, isn't there, about cardio versus versus like um, weights and stuff like that. I mean, what's your view on both? Because everybody says like running 
is good for losing weight, but then other people say, no, no, you build your muscle and that burns the fat or whatever. What's your take on that stuff? Okay, I'll give you my take. And I would say that this is as close to gospel as you can possibly get because I've worked with a lot of people and I've seen the bad side of not listening to this advice. So this is more kind of coming from a place of stopping people from hurting themselves, which is really important because if you want to guarantee way not to get the results you want is to hurt yourself because you'll just lose everything. So if you if you're watching this and you've got a weight loss goal, so you're 10, 20, 30 pounds overweight, whatever you are, most people start with the weight loss element. That's the first part and they build into the muscle side. Cardio is free. It's easy. You can get your trainers on. You can do it whenever you want. You know, you can do it around your busy schedule. So you could finish this and go for a run. I could finish this and go for a run. The issue you've got is that if you're quite heavy and you're also quite weak, a guaranteed way to hurt yourself is to put a pair of trainers on straight from the office, sitting down for the last six hours. All your muscles are switched off. You're, you've got all that weight going through your knees and your hips. The, the chances of you actually hurting yourself are very, very high. So when it comes to cardio, if you are going to do cardio and you, or you are kind of someone that wants to lose weight, just don't run because it, it's it, you're probably going to hurt yourself. And again, if you do pull a muscle, if you twist the knee, if you cause a back problem, you, you won't be able to train anyway. So you've killed it. Cardio is great because it means, you know, again, it's low impact. It's really easy to do. If you've got a bike at home or you can get steps in, it's brilliant. What it's not going to do, though, it's not going to make you any stronger. Now. All of the research around strength, the, the the kind of the benefits of strength training, the massive when it comes to longevity, when it comes to hormone balance, when it comes to ligament strength, uh, tendon strength, being able to kind of burn more energy as well through the day and focus, stuff like that is, is brilliant. So the, the, in answer to your question is cardio is just a small part of the puzzle. Strength training, really, everybody should be stronger because the benefits are, are huge for everybody, especially if you're someone that's kind of 40, 45, 50, and we're starting to get into that world where longevity is becoming more of a consideration, you have to strength train because, you know, the cardio is good, but the strength training is, in my opinion, even more important. So if you are going to do cardio, I would consider using steps as a way of moving more. Definitely. It's a simple marker. If you want to get better conditioning and burn fat quicker and kind of improve your conditioning, Look at sprint work. So rather than doing long, slow, steady stuff, potentially going something like uh, on a rower, on a bike cross trainer that's much lower intensity, low, imp low impact, sorry, and go for kind of short, sharp bursts because A, it doesn't take a load of time. B, you're going to get conditioned much, much quicker. And C, you're going to see the results a lot quicker as well. Going for, I hear all the time, I had a conversation with someone last week and they're spending six hours in the gym on a treadmill in a week. And not seen a result in five years. Like, come on, you've, you've got to understand that you, at some point you've got to do something different because it's not working. But the, the thing with cardio is it's good, but it's it's everybody's go to because it doesn't you haven't got to learn anything. You can just go on the runner running machine or the bike. So, so if you uh, without giving all your secrets away, if you were going to say to somebody to get started and they only had thirty minutes to do it, what would you be telling them to do in thirty minutes? So again, it would be based around what their specific goal is. So it's kind of that that it depends answer, which I know you don't want to hear, but you know it does it does depend. I think if you had thirty minutes each day, and that's all the time you can commit to what you're doing, I'd definitely look at implementing some sprint work. So whether that's on a stepper, on a bike, on a cross trainer, a row, I generally use something that's lower impact, so you're going to reduce the risk of injury. Go mm -hmm. for a five minute warm up, and then you want to do something like 30 seconds as high intensity as you possibly can, minute rest. 30 seconds as fast as you can, minute rest. Split it down because what it allows you to do is it allows you to get your heart rate really high and recover. Heart rate high and recover. So you're going to get a lot more out of that. Secondly, if you're trying to build in some strength work as well, and again, it's difficult to kind of articulate what this would look like, but big muscle group movements rather than standing there doing, you know, bicep curls for an hour you're not going to get anything out of that apart from a slightly bigger bicep. Go for bigger muscle movements. So your lunges, your squats, your step-ups, your presses, because what's going to happen is you're going to get stronger, you're going to improve your mobility, and also you're going to burn more energy. You're going to get more metabolic change from that. So I think a blend of those two, but you, you and I both know that it's going to come down to what you put in your mouth at the end of the day. That's yeah. what's going to get the biggest change. 
yeah, there's no point going to the gym for half an hour and then 45 minutes in KFC, is there? <laughs> no, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why I said KFC, but you probably you probably go somewhere more luxurious than that. But never mind. Um, so, Cameron, what does what's your plans for your business for the next five years? What does what does Truth Fitness look like in 2029? I think you know, especially around this business leader type of person because that that is our we've 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 worked with that type of person for a long time now and we've created an expertise within that space so i i genuinely want to have there's a couple of things i genuinely want to have an impact on the uk and the mm-hmm. way that business is done from a top-down approach because what we've seen is that when we train the ceo or the manager director or the business owner when we get that individual in shape a couple of things happen First of all, is it inspires the team that are slightly below them because they can see that physical change. They mm-hmm. can see that this person has taken ownership over their health. What then happens is a trickle-down approach. So it doesn't just impact one person. It inspires the team underneath them and starts to have an impact throughout the rest of the team. So what we want to do within our space is to work with senior teams in companies, get those guys in shape because that will inspire the rest of the company. So... One of the big issues I've got with business, and I've been through it, I know what it's like, is how people put their health in fr- uh, behind the business. Mm-hmm. And I know this is, it's changing a little bit slowly. I think the UK is a bit behind other countries. But, you know, educating people that you can have both. You don't necessarily have to put yourself in this position where you're on medication or you're in a position where you're, you know, your health starting to suffer and run a business is the way to do both. It's not going to be a perfect process. It's going to be, you know, understand the fundamentals of what you should be doing. So that's a big part of what, we, what, we're, what we're trying to do here is to have an actual an impact on the way business is done in the UK from a health perspective. Side note, well-being and some of the stuff that's out there that work with business people and, you know, their teams, it, it's just box ticking exercises, you know, giving the team a Mount Kilimanjaro app and all this kind of stuff. So, it's a big dream, but I want to start changing the way that that's done. The second part, and this is a, a bigger a bigger aspiration, a bigger vision for me personally and for the company, is start to turn the UK issue around with diabetes because, you know, it's, it's impacted me personally in my own life with people that I know, and it's not really spoken about. It's not really, you know... All we talk, all we all we see is this latest drug that's been brought out and people can inject themselves and they can lose all this weight and... You know, market, market, market. But no one actually talks about the actual problem and how bad it is in this country. And, and I worry, I've got small children. I worry when I'm sitting there at 6.30 in the morning and they're watching Nickelodeon and they've seen four Happy Meal adverts in the space of an hour. I found that really yeah. worrying. So I think the bigger vision for me personally and us as a company is starting to actually addressing these problems and helping people to understand that, look, you can... You know, you can take ownership over that, how you how you educate your children around food. You can educate yourself around what types of training you should be doing that's free. It's not going to cost anything. And helping people to actually change, you know, the way they feed their children, having more of a positive impact on that. Now, I know that's a huge issue. It's a very deep issue. It's a massive. I've read three books on it, and it's a deep, deep issue. So, you know, I think being part of that change in this country would be, a real aspiration of mine personally and us as a company as well. And I think I think you're 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 right. I think if you think about like if you rewind like 50, 60 years, we didn't really talk about how and what we eat. But of course, everybody had manual labor jobs. So like everybody was kind of out. And I I, I do wonder, and this is probably it's coming from somebody who doesn't understand the issue properly, but I'm going to say it anyway. We used to do very manual labor intensive jobs that basically exhausted us. And so there was no real time to think because you were working. And then when you came home, you were like, I just need to relax and recover. So you had a lot of exercise in your day job, um, which kind of counterbalanced the fact that even if you weren't eating the most healthiest, you were getting a lot of exercise. But I also think a part of, and I'm not qualified to say this, but a part of the mental health crisis also comes from the fact that we are now so 
much is going on in our minds and not with our, you know, we used to go and do a job, lift bricks and do whatever. My dad was a coal miner. You'd do a very labor intensive job that was that then you come home and it was like, I'm done. And now you have emails whizzing around in your head. You've got this going on, that going on, all the stuff you've forgotten. I think the fact that we are so brain driven in our work, that has contributed to the mental health crisis. Absolutely. And then if you look at, you know, again, I've got young kids, so I know what it's like when they want to go on the iPad and the switch noise problem. You know, it, it's this is why I'm worried because it's only going to get worse. People are going to want mm-hmm. more convenience. You know, they're going to want case in point what, when, delivery... what when our AI comes and we don't even have to get out of our beds. Well, when you've got companies like, you know, certain delivery companies that offer Klarna to order McDonald's to a home. I've, I've seen this. It's, it's scary. Why would you want monthly installments for your takeaways? <laughs> I, I think, again, you know, it's, it's a very big subject and it's a deep subject. And um, there's, there's a book called Ravenous, which I recommend people read because it, it, this gentleman goes, he worked for the government and he was advising them on this problem. Very deep problem. But for, for me personally, as someone that's got young children, I am worried about how convenient it is to get access to these types of food. I'm also mm-hmm. I'm also a firm believer that, you know, like alcohol and cigarettes, you know, children should not be being advertised to for Happy Meals at 6.30 in the morning for Nickelodeon. I think it's a liberty. I think they shouldn't be allowing it full stop. There should mm-hmm. be a watershed on that. And it's only the fact that I've, you know, and I know other people that have done it. I sit there with my kids and say, isn't that interesting that there's been four mcdonald's adverts one in the last hour why do you think that is and they're starting to understand okay well they're trying to get me to buy this food that's not Mm. good for me so you know it's the the whole convenience ai thing you know and i'm i'm at the computer a lot just just like you know i'm not really in a gym anymore but i'm in the fitness space so i do get out and work out right you know it, it does worry me and i also yeah we do this we do human first fitness which is where everything we do forever will always be driven by a human. We're never going to go into, into the world where, you know, you click a button, it spits out a pro. That's just not our game. It's going to be a person. You, you won't normal... have a Cameron bot. <laughs> yeah, Cameron bot. I am real, by the way. I'm not, I am a real Cameron. I'm not a fake Cameron. <laughs> um, it, it worries me that I'm hearing more people that are going on to, you know, chat G- GTP and saying, I'm five stone overweight. I've got this problem. What would you recommend I do? It won't be long before there's a, an app that's got a person on it that trains them with it. it it's it's a scary time really but yeah i think fundamentally you know you'll probably agree with me that it's going to be humans with expertise that have got a passion for what they do that are probably going to have the biggest impact on on making these changes i don't think that you know the way things are headed with convenience and fast food and there's so much crap available from a food perspective as well and alcohol and everything you know it, it's going to take a big intervention to to, to turn this around most definitely and we leave what we can wrap up with an interesting point is that the problem with our world right now is it's very difficult and I'm using a pun to know the truth with AI right so much misinformation and it comes down to doing the fundamentals right and I think this is where you know I see this on LinkedIn there's people churning out advice that's obviously from chat GPT but actually what you need is people with experience, people who've actually done something, helped other people do it. And I think that's going to be highly valued in a world where trust is going to kind of, eva- well, it already is. It's evaporating at the moment. Politics, business, everything, because it can all be faked. Yeah. And that comes back to that truth element, right? Being honest and yep. truthful with people. I think, you know, if you, if you, and I'm only, I'm not, promoting that people come to us because maybe we're not a good fit we don't work with everybody right we might not be a good fit but if you're looking for a, a fitness company that can help you change things look at the people they've worked with they work with people that are like you are they traveling around the world are they struggling with their sleep you know if you can find someone that the companies has done that or a coach has done that then probably they can help you but going for some a trainer because they've got a six pack and they've they're eating three pizzas on instagram doesn't necessarily qualify them as the best expert in the world it just means that they've got a six pack and they can eat pizza and yeah and i also struggle ever to take fitness advice from a 22 year old 
because a 22 year old knows nothing about being 40 years old. Good point. <laughs> a very good point. <laughs> I think that be, that business leader part as well. I think, you know, again, I, I've gone from trainer through that process and I get what mm. it's like. I get the, when the VAT bill comes in and someone doesn't turn up, I understand it. So, you know, when I talk to business leaders like yourself, you have that similarity. You kind of get what it's like. So you understand their position. Like you say, if you're looking at a 22 year old that, you know, can work out four hours a day, it's not the a same thing. A, t- a 22 year old that can eat 3000 calories and literally burn 3000 calories because of their lifestyle, but they're not sat behind a desk all day. They're not doing all of that stuff. They're not sat in cars or on planes for hours. Um, but it just bugs me how you see these 22 year olds there. Like, and it's like, you, you haven't even experienced life yet. You don't even know what life is. No, you haven't been in the pub yet. <laughs> so Cameron, this has been brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to put your links to f- come and find you and hunt you down on LinkedIn. Um, any final thoughts you want to share? Uh, before we wrap up I think you know if you're looking if you're a business leader and you're watching this if you're looking for honest truthful advice that's been tested and tried a lot of times check us out we do share content that's specifically for that type of person so just just check us out follow us for a little while and I'm sure you'll you'll pick up some nuggets awesome Cameron thank you so much for coming on always a pleasure to see you my 14 15 month old connection (laughs) <laughs> thanks for inviting me it does feel longer than that right it feels like i've known you for years oh really okay that's nice to hear. yeah that. <laughs> so awesome thank you cameron cheers mate